year, when I was just a child, I had a strange encounter. It was Monday. Shortly before it was time for the shops to close, my mother sent me on an errand to get supper. Quickly, I put on my jacket and went out. It was colder and windier outside than I had thought. But I didn't want to go back. I raised my collar and quickly walked on. At the corner, I almost bumped into a child hopping over the cracks in the sidewalk. Angrily, I stepped aside. Why don't you look out, I said. The child looked at me with a strange smile. Its face was ashen and there were dark shadows under its eyes. There was something under the child that alarmed me. I couldn't figure out what it was. I couldn't see much more than its face, for the child was wearing a dirty black cloak. It had a hood that was much too large pulled over its head. I couldn't even tell if it was a boy or a girl. The child began to howl again. And I suddenly saw that it was barefoot. And on October day, the wind began to pick up. And the trees lining the street cracked as they swayed. Don't you have any shoes? I asked. I was shocked. No answer, just a smile. I thought the child may have shoes hidden under the cloak to make me look crazy. Answer me, do you have shoes? I cried, a shake of the head. But it's much too cold to go around barefoot. Another smile. Do you hear me? I said. It's too cold. You'll catch a cold, a fever, or something. What are you saying that you're worried about me? Asked the child. It looked at me attentively, as if my answer were very important. Well, if you're barefoot out here in the cold, I guess I should be worried, I replied. You're worried about me? The child said happily. A shudder ran down my back. Hastily said, I said, I have to go now. The stores are about to close. I heard a large, creaky doors of the local general store slam shut. The town was slowly closing down around us. You're going now? After all that? Asked the child. There was almost a challenge in the way the child spoke the words. So I asked, what do you mean? The child answered calmly. You said you were worried about me. That means you'll never let me down. I tried to laugh. I can't let you down. I hardly know you. But now we know each other, the child answered. And that's why you have to take me home with you. <laughs> Such boldness left me speechless for a moment. And I said, take you with me. Go home to your own parents. I have no parents. The child looked at me pleadingly. Please take me with you. Are you insane? I said angrily and stepped to go. The child grabbed my arm and begged. Let me go with you, I screamed. <coughs> no, 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 I brushed its clinging hand away from me. Then I hurried off, not bothered to turn around. It was only when I reached the bakery that I looked back and saw the child in the same place, lying on the sidewalk. I suddenly felt sad when I had pushed the poor child away. Feeling guilty, I ran back. The child lay there like a dormant, completely covered by the cloak. Are you hurt? I asked. What you? There was no answer. Oh, please get up, I said. Still no answer. If you want, I can give you some hot chocolate at my house, I said, tentatively. Silence. Do you want to show? I jerked. And then, when there was still no reply, I lifted the cloak and threw it. There was nothing under it. A woman came out of the nearby shop. Are you a relative? She asked. I didn't understand her question. A relative? Whose? The child's. The one who disappeared a year ago, wearing a cloak just like that one. I was too confused to reply. I numbly snatched up the cloak. It nestled against me like a child's body, and I ran home. To this day, I wonder if the child was a figment of my overactive imagination. Imagined or not, I will never forget the child in the cloak. The end.